The title of this video claims that a real monster was involved, but is it true? This monster is actually a bear, but before you say pfft, I have to tell you that this story seriously reminds me of a horror films written by semi-competent screenplay writers. It all started happening in 1915 Japanese village. This village was located in Japan's second largest island, Hokkaido. This island is infamous for having one of the largest bear species, Usuri brown bear. These bees may reach weight up to 550 kilos, which is 1200 pounds, and 274 centimeters, 9 feet, which is as tall as the tallest man ever, Robert Wadlow. It was very early morning in November. Strange sounds woke up the Ikeda family. They were terrified. A massive bear had entered their house. Not sure why, maybe the horse scared it away, but the bear ran away, but not before taking some harvested corn with it. A little bit later, this bear appeared again, and since bears are not fun to have around in your house, Ikeda family asked their son to do something about it. The son gathered few winter hunters to track down this bear. Bear appeared again, and hunters took a shot at it, but failed to kill it. The next morning, they followed the bear's footprints, which led towards Mount Onishika. They have discovered some blood patterns, and were about to locate the bear, however an unexpected snowstorm hit. So the hunters had to abandon their mission. Hunters were like, hey, that bear was wounded by us, he probably will leave us alone. Oh, but they couldn't be more wrong. It's December 9. Ten days have passed since the last bear reappearance. Another house in this village belonged to Ota family. In late morning, a woman and her child were inside the house. Keep in mind that this was a traditional Japanese villager's house, which was as safe as a tent. The bear smashed through the walls and entered the house. Bear quickly bit child's head, killing the kid instantly. The woman tried to fight this monster, but was easily overpowered and dragged into the forest. According to witnesses, the scene resembled a slaughterhouse, with blood puddled on the farmhouse floor. And guys, this is just the beginning of this beast reign of torment. Next day, a party of 30 men was organized to search for this woman that was dragged away. This group entered the forest and found the bear. Five men shot at it, but only one hit the target. The bear fled and 30 men were left unharmed. The hunters scouted the area and discovered dried blood on the snow. They dug the snow and uncovered a gruesome sight. The bear had stashed the body of Mayu in the snow. Only her head and parts of her legs remained. The villagers believed that once this bear had taste of humans, he will come back. They were not wrong. In the evening, monster returned to Ota house, the same house that it killed child and took that woman away. Even though villagers anticipated the return of the bear, they still were scared less. Those 30 hunters which were scouring the forest and found remains of the woman finally returned to the house, but it was too late. The bear has vanished again. Hunters went after it, but uh, went the wrong direction. The villagers now were really scared. Not only they couldn't find this monster, but this bear somehow always managed to surprise them. Women and children went together in Miyuki family house to hide away from the bear. They felt that uh, together it will be safer. Remember when hunters went the wrong direction after the bear? Well, that bear for some reason went straight to Miyuki family house where women and children were hiding. Yep, inside the house Miyuki wife was preparing dinner. Suddenly, the monster bear charged through the window and entered the shack. Bear masterfully overturned the cooking pot which doused the flames. So not only there was an ogre bear inside the house, but it also was dark. But shouldn't there be additional light source, you may ask? There was oil lamp, but during a panic, it also was somehow extinguished. 
The wife tried to run, but her second son, Yujiro, clung to her legs, tripping her as she ran. Thankfully, there was one guard at the house. When he heard the commotion, he entered the house and the bear released the mother and child to pursue him. This woman escaped with two kids, however, there were more left in the house. This guard hid behind the furniture, but was still clawed in the back. Later, this bear turned its attention to other villagers inside the house and mauled two kids. He then bit another kid and turned its attention towards a pregnant woman which was attacked and eaten alive. Witnesses said that they heard how she was begging the bear not to touch her belly but instead to eat her head. Later the fetus was found alive from her corpse unharmed. I guess this bear has morals now. Remember those hunters which went the wrong direction? Well, they realized their mistake and turned back. The wife which escaped thanks to that one guard met those hunters and told what happened. These guys raced to rescue any survivors. When they arrived, they found house in complete darkness. Only thing that informed them of horror inside was bear growls and screaming. Hunters wanted to set the house on fire but were persuaded by the woman. She said that some people may still be alive. So the guards uh, or hunters came up with a plan. They split into two groups. One went to the rear of the house and others were left at the door. The rear group started shouting and banging the weapons to push bear outside. It worked. Bear appeared at the front door. Sadly, they gravely miscalculated the fact that they were bunched up and couldn't shoot because of their fellow hunters were in their line of sight. They simply didn't want a crossfire. Not only that, but some rifles also misfired, so the bear again escaped into the night. Seriously, these are not hunters, these are stormtroopers. Anyway, after that, they have entered the house and discovered that Rikizo and Hisano, first son and daughter of the same relatives, were injured but lived. Thankfully, they didn't set fire to the house back then. Village people now gathered at the school and some into other neighbor houses, further away from the bear attacks. The guardsman group was changed up. Only people who were veterans of the Russo-Japanese war remained at their posts. This was because less experienced people only got in their way. Miyuki Yasutaro, which is the husband of wife which escaped with two kids, he had enough with this monster pillaging the village. He heard of one peculiar hunter by the name of Yamamoto Heikichi, which was an expert bear hunter. He paid a visit to this legendary hunter's house. Yamamoto, the hunter, told Miyuki that this bear is probably Kasakage. A terrifying man eating bear which was previously blamed for the deaths of three women. Miyuki asked for help, but Yamamoto said that he sold his gun in order to buy alcohol, thus he refused to help. If this doesn't sound like an epic anime, then I don't know what does. Miyuki Yasutaro returned to the village in December 11. Just one day after the bear attacked his wife and four children, two of which were dead. Devastated, he and some other people formed a small group to kill this bear. They waited at Miyuki's house, but the bear didn't appear. In December 12, the horrific bear attack news reached Hokkaido government, so they quickly formed a sniper team. Not only that, but also a group of volunteers were gathered from nearby towns. Remember that legendary hunter Yamamoto Hikichi, which sold his gun? Well, he joined. Chief Inspector arrived to the village to assess the damage. Not sure who decided, but they came up with a plan to lure the bear with the dead human bodies which were killed by the bear a few days ago. It was believed that the bear would return to retrieve his victims. This was widely condemned by villagers. I mean, how would you feel if your dead beloved relative was used as a lure? The plan was executed and a team of five snipers plus expert hunter Yamamoto Hikichi were hiding inside the house, waiting for the bear to retrieve the bodies. The plan worked. Bear appeared to check the inside of the house, but before hunters could do anything, it turned back and disappeared again. 
It's December 13. The first house, Otto house. You know, where a kid and a woman were killed. It appears that the bear ransacked the house again and ate some of the winter storage. Not only that, it also damaged at least eight other village houses, but so far no one could find it. Keep in mind that there were 60 men hunting this bear and nobody noticed this slippery devil. This large group of hunters decided to comb the forest and take a fight to its home, the forest. That night a sniper near the river thought he saw something in the shadows. He spoke to this shadow but didn't get any reply. I mean if the bear answered it, it would be too much for the people. Anyway, the sniper together with his team shot at the shadow figure which disappeared. But they did hear a noise from it, leading them to believe to whatever it was, it was wounded. Next day, December 14, sniper team investigated the location where this shadow figure was and found bare footprints with blood. It was now or never. Snowstorms again were building up into the atmosphere, so they had a small time frame. Also, apparently this bear was shot multiple times during ball mayhem and somehow quickly healed his wounds. It was decided, they have to go all in. The legendary hunter Yamamato took only two people with him. He was certain it would be quicker to track this bear with a smaller team. Yamamato successfully tracked this monster and found him resting near Japanese oak. As silently as possible, he approached monster bear, reducing distance to almost 20 meters, which is 60 feet. Yamamato then aimed carefully and shot right through this bear's heart. He also quickly shot through the skull of the Kazakage. The beast was finally dead. When measured, the bear was 340 kilograms or 750 pounds and 2.7 meters or almost 9 feet tall, so it was almost as big as possible. Later a necropsy was done to the Kasagage. Parts of his victims were found in his stomach. The skull and fur of bear were kept, but later lost. After the attack, most of the villagers left and the village rapidly transformed into a ghost town. One kid which was bitten and survived, well he still died from the wounds three years later. Another man who survived because he wasn't during the bear's attack in the house, he drowned in the river. This is one of the craziest stories I have read. It is almost hard to believe how dramatic it gets. Bear appeared and disappeared like a ghost, hunters and guardsmen who kept missing it, a few shots did hit him, but bear still healed its woods magically, also casting snowstorms to cover its tracks, and also dragging people in the forest, leaving fetus alone because the victim asked, it's like this bear is cosplaying as a horror character. Oh, also having a main character, legendary hunter, which is the one who defeats this beast. Still not as dangerous as finding Jehovah's Witnesses at your doorstep.